Ready. Welcome to the New Orleans Jazz Museum. Let's go check it out. I think because it's, uh, I think uh, despite the challenges, the, uh, the music itself um, won over. And so basically um, these folks who were, who, who uh, were enslaved, these uh, African-Americans uh, persevered, made their music, um, created this beautiful art form that um, is a human art form that's relatable to by everyone, obviously, since it's uh, um, become the music of the world. And, um, um, you know, that's evidenced by Fats Domino, who's represented here in the, in the gallery. Um, of course, Fats was one of the first people to really popularize rock and roll. He was from New Orleans and from the Ninth Ward here. And uh, tragically, his home was flooded during Katrina. Um, he was already, you know, up in age at that time, so this was a really um, difficult blow. But he he um, he um, dealt with it well and lived many years afterwards. But uh, he was uh, he was really good to us here at the museum, and uh, we're grateful to him and his family for for providing this piano to us. We can uh, take a look over here. Uh, here's a uh, big Frida painting of big Frida. Big Frida's wonderful. She's performed with us a number of times. And this is another example, um, not only of being African-American, but also being um, someone who's of a different uh, sexual orientation, and, um, but uh, living their life despite those challenges and, and uh, um, making music that's uh, now nationally recognized really worldwide. Here's a, uh, wonderful por a wonderful painting of Louis Armstrong right here. And so Armstrong, of course, is the greatest, he, he uh, grew up in New Orleans in what was known as pretty much as uh, Black Storyville, um, now where uh, the, um, the New Orleans courthouse is near Broad Street in Tulane. And um, Black Storyville extended all the way to around Rampart Street. It was kind of a large section. And then there was um, Storyville, which was um, bounded between, pretty much between um, Canal Street Rampart and um, um, in that area, a little bit like right off across from uh, the French Quarter across Rampart Street. But um, so Louis Armstrong, you know, as a child, he worked really hard. He had a really difficult situation growing up and um, he really wanted to play music. His idols were these folks who were playing music in the in Black Storyville and in Storyville, Jelly Roll Morton and, um, you know, Kid Ori. Um, um, King Oliver was his real uh, mentor, and, and so um, um, you know, by the time he's he's uh, he's eighteen, nineteen, he's he's made a reputation for himself in New Orleans, and uh, ultimately he ends up having to go to Chicago to to really uh, to make it big, which he does. But um, but it was very challenging it, it, during this period, and. Um, um, you know, um, this music is being disseminated. This is an example of, you know, Louis Armstrong going to meet King Oliver in Chicago and uh, play with his band of these New Orleans musicians, African-American musicians going to other areas and um, really kind of laying the seeds for this music around the country, not only Chicago, but Los Angeles, New York, all of the major uh, northern cities. And before that, um, you know, gospel spreading, um, uh, throughout the South, as well as um, jazz and the river boats. Um, the rivers, of course, were a major um, avenue of dissemination. And, and, uh, and really, during the First World War, when African-American soldiers were going to Europe, this was a major, um, a major piece for the worldwide spread of, of uh, what was then known as American music, which was really African-American music. And, um, 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 uh, with uh, uh, William Reese Europe and uh, his influence, his band was playing all of these, I mean, all these places around France and other parts of Europe. So, uh, and there were many other African American bands, uh, army bands. So, um, um, and of course, the French today are still big fans of uh, of jazz and, and American music. And so, um, um, all of these different avenues help help spread the music. Really, you know, 21st century starts in, uh, in Congo Square here in New Orleans. 
um, uh, West Africans having a chance on Sundays, the enslaved West, West Africans having a chance on Sundays to maybe sell something at the market there in, in Congo Square, um, perform their own music. Um, there were drum circles, there were um, um, uh, folks being able to play the music that they knew. And, um, and this music uh, eventually influenced the rhythms that we know of uh, today. And, um, in jazz and really all of these other forms, rock and roll, hip hop, everything. Um, but New Orleans really was this truly a musical city as it is today and really one of the most musical cities in the world. But, um, you know, French opera was happening. I mean, real, well, opera was happening when it was during, during the French period here and then later the Spanish period and then later the American period. But um, so uh, um, there were free people of color who were, um, who were singing opera, performing, um, you know, working on uh, the backdrops. There was not only uh, opera, but there was a lot of theater that was happening in New Orleans and, um, and free people, people of color were involved in all of that. And of course, today we have opera Creole and uh, um, um, many folks of color uh, performing opera, theater, all of these great things. And um, um, so, you know, by, by we get past the Civil War and um, and uh, soon Storyville um, is coming up. And then also at the same time, the river boats are um, going to all these different cities from New Orleans, from not only to within the United States, but around the world. There's, and so, um, um, you know, uh, river transport and, um, and boats are basically disseminating these sounds, the, this music um, all over the place. And, um, um, you know, uh, the gospel traditions, the uh, blues traditions, um, what ends up becoming jazz with, you know, ragtime, especially in Storyville and also black Storyville. Uh, Louis Armstrong was born um, uh, near the intersection of Broad and uh, Tulane where uh, the uh, um, city court is right now. But this was part of black Storyville and he had a hard time growing up, uh, very difficult situation, but he worked hard and, um, you know, he pulled a coal cart. He did all these things, but he, he loved the music. And uh, his idols were King Oliver and Kid Ory and all these folks who later moved on to Chicago. And by the time he's in his early 20s, he, he leaves New Orleans and um, um, goes to Chicago. And of course, before that, he had been playing on the river boats and going to see all these, all these places along the river and spreading this music along with these other musicians. But um, uh, African-American musicians are leaving New Orleans, going to Chicago, to Los Angeles, New York, all, all of the major cities. And, um, and then, uh, of course, when the World War um, I comes along, around the same time, uh, musicians, um, African-American musicians around the U.S. are going, that are playing this music, are going to Europe. Um, uh, William, William Reese Europe is... Uh, is one of these musicians and has this wonderful band that's performing um, 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 for the armies and the, the uh, civilians in Europe are hearing this music, it's spreading, becoming uh, this exciting American music. And uh, not just thought of as, as African American music, but as, as American music. And, um, and so, uh, you know, consequently today we, we um, have this music that, that was from enslaved peoples from Africa, beginning in Congo Square, that is now the, the, the soundtrack of the world, basically. These enslaved Africans didn't, didn't just come to America, weren't brought to America without having a, a past life, without having lived and had all these skills, this culture, all of this, that, you know, um, in each instance, in each, um, and there were multiple cultures that, that these uh, folks were brought from and um, that had long histories and long histories of craftsmanship and, um, and you know, song and religion and all of these things. And so um, when they had a chance on Sundays to, to do their own thing, to sell at market, to make a little bit of money for themselves, to um, play their music, to, to dance, to um, express their religious beliefs, etc. cetera, um, this, this ends up influencing those around them and becoming part of the culture of New Orleans and spreading to 
to other parts of the world. Um, and so it you know, really begins in Congo Square, and this is a depiction of, a later depiction of Congo Square. This image here on the wall is taken from life from, from Congo Square, and, and this shows um, the kind of drum that was, that was played. Um, you can see this is the drum that somebody is, is sitting on and, and playing, so this is really showing you what, it was, what was happening there. And uh, this is an example of a, um, uh, a drum from the Congo. And uh, this is on loan to us from uh, uh, Southern University here in New Orleans. Uh, they have a wonderful collection, by the way. And uh, you can see here this stringed instrument, the kora, is really the fore forefather of the uh, banjo, which ends up becoming a, um, you know, really an American instrument. And uh, really big, of course, in jazz and in other forms here. The slit drum and uh, many, uh, you know, metallic um, instruments like this metal bell and shakers. Uh, the kalimba, of course, was a um, really popular uh, instrument um, in many parts of Africa. And, uh, um, and you know, the, the uh, Native Americans also had an influence in all of this, and you can see um, this drum is an example of, uh, of Native American drums, and of course the Mardi Gras Indians um, in, uh, in fellowship with, uh, with Native Americans uh, still flourishing today. An example of, the, of um, Louis Moreau Gottschalk, who was of French descent, but um, um, hearing these rhythms and, and uh, ultimately creating the bambula, which is you know, African uh, music and dance. There were free people of color in New Orleans who, who um, were heavily involved in, in opera. And, um, and of course, the uh, opera creole is, is continuing that, that tradition today. But it wasn't just um, uh, opera singing, which was fantastic, but it was also, you know, set design, the whole thing. There was a lot of theater happening here in New Orleans. And... Um, um, What's that? Composer. Yeah, compo yeah, composers like Edmond Dede, who ends up going to uh, and live, pretty much living the rest of his life in Paris. But there were many composers, poets, writers, um, you know, people who were publishing newspapers. There was this whole world um, um, uh, that free people of color, because they had they they were not enslaved and had the chance to do it, were doing it. And um, and so um, uh, with heavy you know heavy influence on all of those around them. Um, and uh, making uh, making um, these these contributions to uh, to American history. You know, we take for granted today the drum set, but um, there really wasn't uh, the drum set before um, really the turn of the turn of the 19th to 20th century. The the um, the bass drum pedal had been invented many years before that many, many years before that, but not widely used. Um, once you introduce the bass drum pedal, um, you can add other instruments around it. It frees up the hands to, to, uh, to play these other instruments, adding the, the tom-tom, the, um, the floor tom, the cymbals, uh, snare drum, all of these things that creates the drum set we think of today. This is the um, first known use uh, of a uh, bass drum pedal in New Orleans uh, by uh, D.D. Chandler. And this is uh, 1896 with the uh, John Roman Show Band. And um, you can see here, and also, you know, you, before, before this, before the bass drum pedal, before the, uh, the drum set, you'd have a, somebody playing the snare, you'd have somebody playing the cymbals, the bass drum, and of course that cost the band leader extra money and uh, to hire these extra musicians. So. Um, it's also thing, you know, one of economy, you can combine all of these things. And another byproduct is that it has a different sound to it. It's one person, you know, playing these different, these different elements. And, um, you know, the drum set may have, may have been happening in other places, but I think New Orleans can say that, hey, look, you know, jazz is coming up here in a major way. And I think a general can say that about jazz. Um, and consequently, the, the drum set, in large measure, we think, is coming out of New Orleans um, and going to these other places. And if you think about <clears throat> the influence that the drum set um, has had on, on uh, traditional musics around the world, it's pretty incredible. And it's these rhythms, these African rhythms that are being 
<clears throat> played on the, on the set um, that are changing and have changed the way uh, music uh, is happening around the world. Um, really, the, the story behind it all, the, the, the lyrics, the emotional aspects, um, you know, are really born from, from survival um, and, um, and true, uh, true feeling. That's, that is, in, in some ways, the, uh, the, um, the thing that really gets to the heart. Also, it's, it's the, uh, the charm as well. And um, um, born from survival, but also within survival, improvisation. But in, in, in pro, um, improvisation to a goal of, uh, of getting out of that, that pain to something that's, that's greater, that's, that's happier. And, um, and that's, I think, what is appealing to people around the world. And what has made it so appealing is this, um, this deep emotional connection um, as well as the rhythms that are um, infectious, that are, um, that are uh, uh, mesmerizing, and um, it's, it's the perfect combination and, and has proved itself uh, uh, to be so. The beauty of it is, is that people who were in, you know, basically in survival mode, they, they, they were um, um, treated very harshly, um, you know, um, blocked from doing, from education, blocked from this, you know, told hor that they were horrible, and all the, but making do with what they had, creating something beautiful out of what, what they had, something that, um, you know, um, whether it's the blues, gospel, uh, jazz, um, um, all of these other forms that have come out, but, but um, it's, it's um, the, what I find, um, um, not only useful but um, inspiring is the is the persistence, the resilience, and um, um, ability to create art out of a difficult situation.